Right, so uh, this is a go at making a New England Pale Ale. This is actually the second highest uh, rated recipe on Brewfather, which I've tried before, but not since I've got a little bit better. So we're trying this uh, now. So uh, here's the grain bill on this thing. It's a 5% uh, New England Pale Ale, which is quite interesting. Um, we've got seven uh, kilos of Pilsner, a kilo of oats, a kilo of wheat, and for some color, which we normally don't put in, some carrot red. Um, and I'll show you sort of what this looked like at the end. It actually uh, was a great looking beer at the end with the colour. Well, we normally make some more OD coloured beers, but this was great. Big hop schedule on this. There was um, it's a double batch, 800 grams of of hops, uh, but you know that's that's pre and dry hop, so um, you know it's 400 grams per per go. Um, so there's the uh, the hop schedule. Most of it was um, in here was you know aroma hops that were added it flame out but this did actually ask for some that were still in the boil i normally don't add any hops to the boil uh for bitterness and i'll come back to why and um there's my water chemistry there and we're just using the um the verdant ipa yeast which is great so brew day in the morning um you know just getting the water up uh, recirculating after we've done the uh the additions and uh, here's the grain bill so you know it was too much grain could for a double batch to fit into my one pallet um, you know, here's the grain bill here in the bucket. <clears throat> there was about nearly 10 kilos or nine and a bit kilos of grains in total. Um, the mix was, you know, pretty bang on. Light colour with that little bit of carrot red in there just to give it a, a bit more colour that we wanted. Um, here's the empty packets of the extra stuff I added. So there's the oats we just get from the shops and the, and the carrot red that we stuck in there as well for that colour that we wanted and a bit of wheat malt also. Um, I did put rice husks in this thing as well, just to you know make sure we didn't have any sparging issues. So, you know, fast forward this, you know, lots of grains, um, you know, just progressively build it up, putting in some husks, build it up, put in some more husks, just to try and make sure we didn't have a stuck, um, a stuck mash. We did get a stuck one last time. I wouldn't say stuck, but it took ages for it to to filter through. So we just made sure we just put those rice husks hus in as we went <clears throat> just to, you know, make sure it could recirculate okay and then, you know, sparge at the end. The husks aren't expensive. I think they were five bucks for a kilo. But, you know, we got this up to, you know, pretty much the top. Um, probably wouldn't go... I reckon that the limit on this Guten's probably 10 or 11 kilos. Uh, you know, going any more than that, you, you know, you, it's getting quite heavy and it's getting real close to the top. But... Now we got this in the mix was pretty good um with the with the water mix um and it's uh you know it's it, it all went in okay so i wasn't too concerned about it this is just getting the temp up you know we normally go a couple of couple of um degrees above just when we put so here's the mesh uh cover on top um which just clean that off to make sure we don't get any um of the mulch in there cover on and the uh dropping down the the center pipe and um yeah, get this up. So we've got a little bit of recirculation going early. I couldn't get it much more than that. That was the most I could get. We did that mash for about an hour. So this was at the end, it cleared up pretty good. Um, you know, I didn't get any grains in there, which was awesome. Recirc was good. Took in some gravity readings, we're right on the numbers, you know, 1063, I think we're at. Um, so now we'll just bring it up to temp for a, a mash out. So, you know, lifting this up, like it might, does not sound like a lot, but lifting up wet grain from there you get a bit of resistance with the water but lifting up is pretty decent um you know it's a decent lift and a twist and making sure that you know it sits on the top of the pedestal okay which wasn't too bad and normally stand up so it's a bit easier to lift and we did so this is now just um <clears throat> you know lifting this up and just letting this sparge away the only downside to this guten is it doesn't have a sight glass so when you're sparging from the top um uh, and you're adding water and you're sparging, you can't see how much you're filling up to. You can have a good look down the side of the, the thing here, like you can see here, where we're sort of getting close to the top, but that's the only thing this 50 litre needs, which is a sight glass if you're doing a, a double batch, but you know, it's it's not that hard considering you can sort of look inside and look on the back there and sort of get an indication of how, how high you are uh, with the water when you're about to put that in. So we sparge for a bit. I brought that water in from the, the keggle um, at 78 degrees and just you know, sparged over the top. So bring up to the boil, you know, pre-boil we're at 10.45. We're supposed to be at 10.51 at the end. So this was pretty much bang on the numbers. Um, you know, boiling at the top of this thing gets a bit scary. You know, the, you get a bit of hot break at the top. And you know, the last batch I was a bit worried about, you know, making sure we don't get no boil overs. 
So I sort of put my foot on the power point and hold that as it gets up to the boil just to make sure that it doesn't boil over. There's no hops or anything in there, but I've just seen too many videos where you get a boil over and I didn't want to have any mess. So the boil went fine, just stirred in the hot break into the top. Um, you know, the boil's massive on these 3000 watt Gutens. It's, you know, it's, it boils massively. So we boiled for an hour. We've got the hops all ready uh, to go in. We've got Galaxy, Mosaic and uh, Citra. Um, this is the first time I've actually put hops in um, in on the hot side, um, and there's some yeast nutrient there as well. But we put hops in on the hot side on the hot side. So I normally do everything at flame out or further, and this we put in with five minutes left in the boil. Um, just I just wanted to see what it was like. Um, I've never done this on the hot side because I cube, but um, I'll, I'll talk about the beer at the end when we get there. But um, you know we put five minute uh, hot side. So the rest of the hops just went straight into these bags from. Kegland, I just poured them straight in. They're pre-sanitized, nice and easy. Um, and uh, here we are, ready just in the bucket. I'm going to put one in the bucket and one in the um, in that fermenter bucket. So these are a bit fiddly. I definitely get gloves if I was doing this next time. I actually dropped. You can't see it, but I dropped the silicon hose in the bag when I was filling it up because this thing just gets super hot and it's you know it's hard to touch. When you put the clamp on the top there as well, it sort of bends the top of the. The, the the port so you sort of got to you know because it's hot bend it back and put it on you know when you're screwing on it's a little bit hard but um these are the things we learn as we go so we ended up with two full worts you know 40 um 40 liters in total um, which is a double batch which was great um brew day went um went pretty well so um you know we, we both of them are in those buckets which were pretty easy to pour when we put them in um you know as like i said 40 liters which was great so we've got this in the, the fermenter um, you know, you can see you know, the colour of it was awesome. Um, you know, that carrot red just makes a difference to that odie colour that we've normally been making. So I was very happy with, with that. A lot of mess with that verdant yeast that we put in. It's a super quick yeast too. Like these things are finished in four days for a 5% beer. You know, ramped it up at the end there to about 23 degrees to finish it. Finish it off and just get all the diacetyl out of the beer. Um, and this is about day four. So, um, you know, the, the, as I said, the colour was um, sort of bang on. So moving out of the dry hop, we've dropped it. I always dry hop at 15 degrees or lower, which removes a bit of that astringency from the from the hops that you get. I highly recommend doing that to change my beers massively. So you can see the hops sort of sit at the top there. Uh, they sort of sit around at the top and just give it a bit of a shake, um, you know, uh, just, to, just to drop down the beer. And we'll, we left that there for three days on these hops. Uh, while we you know, left it there for 24 hours at, at 15 degrees and then cold crashed down to one and left it there for two days to cold out. So uh, I wanted to try this. It's probably going to leave it for another 24 hours to cold crash, but I wanted to try it today. So I just put you know, three or four litres into this little mini keg just because we wanted to have some beers this afternoon um, and transferred that in. And this is how I, how I carb. Um, three and a half minutes on the legs at 40 PSI hooked up, just giving it a gentle roll. Uh, three and a half minutes does, you know, rather than shaking kegs, this gets it done in, you know, perfectly about 85%. So this is the colour of the beer. Um, you know, just talking about what I was doing about, uh, first time I've done a hot side hop drop. So I'd definitely be not doing hot side. Hot side. I'd be moving everything to the cube moving forward. It was a little bit more bitter than what I wanted, but this was about experimenting and just seeing how how the uh, bitterness would be. So it's probably, you know, double what I would normally, uh, would normally do. So the colour was bang on carbonation's perfect and um yeah we'll be making this beer again and you know moving all the the hops to uh to the cube